It is so good to be with you today. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited today because I have my husband here with me. He's also my pastor. We've been married 25 years. And I like to open up the Word first off, and then we're going to let him testify and just speak to you today. I'm reminded of the Scriptures, but with Jesus, he told the men that it was impossible with men, but with God, all things are possible. And I think of that scripture because many people told me that my husband here today uh, would, could not be saved maybe. Uh, maybe there would be no way. And um, you know a little bit about the story, but we're going to let him talk for a moment. But just remember, if you're praying for someone, and I did for two years, and God got a hold of my husband, and he's here today, and he is now a pastor of Resurrection Power Ministries. God is amazing, isn't he? Amen. Amen. God is good, and God has been amazing in our lives. Yes. Uh, you know, Jeannie has talked a lot about uh, me. <laughs> uh, she's uh, the Broken No More series. Uh, I've, I've teased and I've told her that most of that is basically saying how bad my husband was before he got saved. And that's true. I was. I, there was a lot of things that I didn't do right and uh, that I wasn't the best person. I wasn't the best man. I wasn't the best uh, husband. And, uh, but through God, all things are possible. And I yes. praise God every day when he brought me from where I was to where he is, you know, to where I am today. Amen. Uh, he's done a quick work in me, and I praise him for that. Yes. Tell him about how you didn't believe in God. He did not even believe in God. And what happened there? Well, honestly, when I was 12 years old, I went to a church. A bus picked me up, and I went to a church. And it was uh, a wonderful man that drove the bus, and they took me to the church. I went forward in a service, uh, asked God to forgive me, was baptized. About two weeks after that, I was in the church service with my brother, and he was a couple of years younger than me. And... Uh, we were sitting there and he asked me, he told me that he had to uh, go to the restroom and I said something to the effect, whispering, you know, not being loud, not being, uh, we weren't raised like that, so we were uh, being really respectful. And the pastor of that church, he stopped the service and he looked and he pointed at me, I mean, just like this. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the way, if, if I'm pointing at you, you'll know. He pointed at me and he said, someone go over there and knock those two kids in the head. Oh. And for me, at 12 years old, it was a very devastating thing that happened to me. I, I walked out of that church today and I made myself a promise that I would never set foot in another church for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I made pretty good on that. And uh, at that day, I decided that there was not a God. Uh, so if you're watching this, and if you're in authority in a church, you yes. really got to be careful in how you uh, handle kids. I, yes. I believe that. I'm, I don't blame that pastor for the, my life. Uh, don't get me wrong. But I do think that that could have been maybe handled a little different for me. And maybe my life would have been different. But like I said, I don't blame him because most of the things we do, we cause for ourselves. But I went through my entire, from, from then through most of my life, I was... Uh, I guess I would consider myself an atheist. I didn't believe in God. I didn't want to talk about God. I didn't want to hear about God. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all the way up. Uh, and actually when I met Jeannie, uh, that was my views. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't believe in God. And she understood that and uh, why she continued to uh, go out with me and while we got married, I still yet to this day, it had to have been God because she wasn't raised like that. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, uh, when we were, uh, you know, we got married, and, you know, a marriage won't work without God. I, I know that. I, our marriage was, we would got married, and our marriage wasn't going the greatest, and we were fighting all the time. And she would always go to Mama's. She had a little white Dodge Shadow, and the, the woman could pack that little car and get all her clothes in it and go to Mama's faster than anybody I had ever seen. <laughs> she was really good at it, and she got, and, and she did it quite a few times. Yep. But this one particular time, she had we had been fighting, and she had went to her mom and dad's, and uh, I called down there to talk to her. And her dad answered the phone, and, and bless his heart, he's uh, he's going through some things right now. He's uh, he's fighting cancer, and and we love him. But he, I called to talk to her, and he got me on the phone, and he told me he said your marriage is never going to work without God, and I kind of 
didn't want to talk about that, mm -hmm. but it, that's what he told me. And yes. I hung up the phone and <laughs> and I asked. I, 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 there was a little Bible there that Jeannie had. I never will forget it. It was a little red Bible. And I just said, all right, God, if you're real, I'm going to open this word. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to point to a scripture. If it has anything to do with me, then I'll believe that you're real. And so I just threw the Bible open, and I pointed my finger, and when I did, it went to Luke 6, 45. And it says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good fruit. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And honestly, in an instant when I read that, I knew that some of the problems that I had is because of the evil in me was coming out. And that's why that, that uh, Jeannie and I, that's why we were fighting and that's why all that was going on. So mm -hmm. I... At that very instant, I, for that instant, I believed in God for the first time since I was 12 years old. Yes. And I was about 28 or 29 at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe maybe 30, mm -hmm. somewhere around in there. And, and I called Ken back and I told him, I said, uh, I said, I think I just got saved. And uh, he, you know, was praising God and everything. Now, I would like to tell you that I started going to church and everything was great but you know when the devil has a hold of someone sometimes he really has a grip and he had a real grip on me and uh, I, I, I came to the realization that there was a God but I can't tell you that I lived right for him through that period of time and uh, so I, I went through uh, quite a few years uh, still not really living for God in and out back and forth you know uh, playing the hokey pokey with God, if you mm -hmm. want. Uh, one foot in, one foot out, back yes. and forth. And, and that's what I did. And so I, uh, but, and Jeannie had started serving God and had started going to church about two years. Mm -hmm. And she would come home and she would tell me about church and she would tell me about God and she would preach to me. And, and, and some of the things you may have, I, 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 told, I called her after I got saved. I, I said she was a blonde headed pit bulldog. <laughs> because she did have that pit bull dog type thing. She would at me all the time and tenacious about telling me about God and telling me about the church. And I told her one time, I said, why should I go to church when I said, all we'd have to do is put a steeple on top of the house yep. and there'd be church right here. That's all you talk about. <laughs> but, you know, we had got to a point really where the, the marriage was really in trouble. Yep. And she asked me to go to a revival and I went because just to make her leave me alone for a couple of days. That was my attitude. Mm -hmm. But when I got to that revival that day, uh, God moved on me. And I went forward that day and I made up my mind that I was going to serve God. Tell them about, I had a brother and a sister-in-law that I was working on at the same time. And I would call them tenaciously and bother them. And they all three decided to come. But tell them what happened, what you had felt. Denny never planned on going forward. But tell them what you thought about my brother. That was, uh, yes, that, that, it was outside. And, uh, and her brother and uh, sister-in-law had come to church. And I was sitting beside of her brother. And I was watching him. And I knew, I could tell that he was kind of like, fidgeting and yeah. he was, I could tell that the message was really moving on him. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, the message didn't touch me because I didn't come there for that. I didn't come other than just to get her off my back, honestly. <laughs> and, but I could tell the message was really doing something with him and he was kind of fidgeting. And this is really what I thought and this was what came to my mind. I thought, well, if I go, he'll go. And I tease him and I say, and he really needed it. He really needed it. He really needed it. It's always who and, what everybody else needs. <laughs> and so I just kind of did like that. And I said, come on, let's go. And we went to the altar and he, his wife and he both went. And they come and they knelt. And I went up there and I knelt down. And while I was there, though, you know, I went just for that reason. I didn't even go. I didn't, <laughs> didn't go. But while I was there, God started tucking on my heart. He started pulling on me and he started saying, you know, if you would change your life, your life could be wonderful and it could be different. And, and I really got a hold of that while I was there. You know, sometimes just getting on your knees 
is enough for mm -hmm. God to really start using you. And that's what happened when I went to my knees. Yes. And, uh, and I, I went to my knees and while I was there and God started working on me. And, and I really did have true salvation that day. Uh, I, I got, uh, I went down on my knees at center and got up a child of God. Right. Uh, and, I, and I believe that, that God worked on me in an instant. And before that, uh, I don't think that I had ever gave a man a hug in my entire life. I'll be honest with you. I mean, that was the way I wasn't, I loved nobody and it was hard for me, that kind of emotions. And I got up and I hugged every man in that place. Mm -hmm. I loved everybody. And that's what God will do. Yes. God can do that for you yes. if, if you allow him to. Right. When you, you, you learn what true love is. And when I got saved, I learned how to love my wife. I learned how to love her more than, yes. I learned how to love my kids. I learned yes. how to love family and just fellow man. And uh, it was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. I, uh, from my side of it too, and for those, we ask God for things a lot of times and then we're shocked when he does it. When he came to that service that night, um, I was kind of doubtful, did he really get saved? And it was just a couple days later that you ended up going to the hospital and have an open heart surgery. And I remember being in that hospital room and he was laying in that bed before they were going to do the open heart surgery the next morning. And Denny had said, you know, I gave my life to the Lord and I was kind of going, I hope he did. And he said, do you think I'll go to heaven? And I said, yes, if you really did ask for forgiveness, you're going to go to heaven. And I went out of that room crying and I went to the vehicle and I opened up the Bible because I just couldn't understand how God was going to save you and then take you from me because I was scared. I thought, oh, they're going to do open heart surgery that's taking your heart out of your chest. And, and I went out to the vehicle, and this is how God is so real. You know, if you ever open up the Word of God and, and do like you did, you just opened it up and God speaks, that's what I did. I opened up the Bible, and I came to the Scriptures that says, Peace be unto you. And I had such a peace. I knew. I said, God, please don't take Denny. Now that we're going to have a family that's serving you, I said, let us serve you know, God together. And that's what I asked for. And how long has that been? It was in... 2001. 2001 probably. that he had the surgery. And so you've had a lot of physical things that's come, uh, come against your body. A lot of attacks. And um, tell them though, I, I, what it was is I started seeing a change in him. I, I, what I was going to get to was is that I said, God, have you really saved him? Well, after he got through the open heart surgery and he come home, he started writing gospel songs. Okay, the very first one you wrote was Come Eat at My Table. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share a little bit where you come from on that. You took it from the natural to the spiritual, Come Eat at My Table. Talk to them a little bit about why you said, you know, Come Eat at My Table. Well, obviously, <laughs> I like to eat. Uh, I, uh, and when I was going to church, I, I would hear people talking about being hungry for the Word and yes. to be hungry. and. And I, and I looked at that, and, and as I was, I didn't know the word, but, but as I read it more and more, and as I, I got into it more and more, I understood that I was hungry, mm -hmm. and that I needed to be hungry more and more. And so, and I also got to thinking about when I was a kid, I would go to, uh, it didn't matter how late I came in, mm -hmm. what I had been doing, anything, I would, when I come home, my mom would get out of bed, and she would cook me, uh, yes. supper if it was midnight. Mm -hmm. And I got to thinking about that and I got to thinking about the, the spiritual table of God and I wrote this song, Come Eat at My Table. Yes. And just like my mother, when she would get up and she would feed me at, at any time, you know, the spiritual table is always set. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I looked at that and, and that's where that psalm came from. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's been a favorite for a lot of people a lot of years, uh, but it... Uh, it, it means a lot to me because I remember the first day that uh, my pastor's wife heard it. I was playing it at the church and no one was there and I was by myself and she came in and uh, it was Pastor Jim and Laura Bohannon over at Log Hall, I love those two. Mm -hmm. And uh, she come in and she heard it and she said, where did that song come from? And I said, well, I wrote that song. And as I sang it, the, you know, tears started coming down my eyes because I knew that God had really gave me something at that point. And he gave me a lot of other songs after that. But, uh, yes. you know, and I praise God for that because he's done, I, I believe, a quick work in me because if you knew where I came from, yes. not believing in God, not wanting to hear about God, uh, drugs, alcohol, everything that goes along with that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, God, he, he has been so good to me. All things are possible. Amen. But the song, I, I like it, like he said, he's, you know, 
this is our food, you know, and he says, come eat at my table. If you're hungry, sit right down. There's plenty here to eat your fill. Don't leave until you're done. <laughs> Don't leave until you're done. And so that is our God. You know, he's more than enough. And so I started seeing a change. The fruit was there. Started writing gospel songs. Um, he wasn't, he didn't have the temper that he used to have. And God was doing such a great and mighty work. It almost makes me cry today. And that was in I got saved in 1999, and I believe it was two years later for Pastor Denny. And we've been pastoring now seven years at Resurrection Power Ministries. But back to the physical attacks in your body. You know, one thing that I know that people say, how did you quit all these things that you were doing? God is able. With God, all things are possible. Each person, it's different. We had a lady that just gave her life to the Lord last two weeks ago at our mm -hmm. church. And she quit cigarettes. And she's been two weeks? A I week? think a week now. A week. Yeah. And all she did was just say, God help me, and she's laid them down. Now, Danny, he said he was into drugs, alcohol, things, and some of these things fell off real quick for Denny. But one of them that I remember at the house was Sko. And you had already quit a lot of things, smoking, and you went to Sko to help you get the nicotine. Tell the people out there that's watching how that came about. I remember being in church. And we were at the altar, and you take it from here. Tell them what happened. Well, you know, God was calling me into something more for my life, and I understood that. And he, you know, when I first got saved, I had no, nothing. I felt, well, there was nothing wrong with that, and I'm not to judge anybody for what they're doing. I'm just telling you what God did for me. Yes. He, uh, and he told me, and I felt this in the spirit, that he told me, he said, it's going to be hard for you to witness to people with a dip of skull in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I took that and said, whatever, God, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this is, I've done this for years. I've gave up everything. This is the last thing I've got. Would you, you know, kind of leave me alone on this? Mm -hmm. I was at the altar praying one night, and honestly, I was praying. I was seeking God. And while I was praying and seeking God, all I could think about is that I really wanted uh, nicotine. Mm -hmm. And so I just got up and just almost mad. And I got up and I went outside and I went to the car and I grabbed up everything that I had that was nicotine uh, related. I brought it in and I threw it on the altar and I said, God, I need your help. And I, a lot of people, the young lady at our church, she says, the cravings went away. I don't have cravings for cigarettes. I don't have cravings for nicotine. I'm so proud that that happened that way with her, but it didn't happen that way with me. Um, it was a day-to-day -day thing that I had to, it's just like with drugs, it's just like with alcohol, it's just like with any addiction, pornography, any addiction that you have, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And it was for me. Some people, God delivers immediately. Some people have to work it. I had to work every day and every time that the cravings would come, I would call on the name of Jesus and sometimes I would scream the name of Jesus. I would yell and I would say, Jesus, you've got to help me. And as the cravings went, more it went away, more and more and more. That's been 12, 13 years ago that I haven't, uh, haven't had any nicotine. It's been about 13 years for drugs. Yes. Uh, you know, Thank and you I, I praise God for that. God delivered me from a lot of things and he did it. I mean, yeah, it was, it was tough. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you will always struggle when you've been a, a, an addict. You will struggle, struggle with some things. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. My favorite scripture, yes. with God, all things are possible because I've seen it in my life. Mm -hmm. And I remember whenever he got up from the altar, I thought, where is he going? And then to slam the door, I mean, he went out mad, is right. But he was determined. You were serious. Like you said, it's possible, even though those cravings are there and there may be somebody out there that's wanting to quit something, if you will make up your mind to do it with God, He will make it possible. Amen. And I remember laying in bed two in the morning and, and I would hear Him holler out, Jesus, and I'd just start praying because I knew I never had that habit. I never had that addiction uh, type lifestyle, so I don't know what it's like. And But there's somebody out there that I think they do know. And it's, it's, a, it's possible with God. Okay. What's impossible with men is possible with God. And that's what we read this morning, and I, and I like that. Um, and so he's accomplished that too with God. You know, we lost a son, mm -hmm. 24 years old, uh, Zach Waters. Um, 
Denny goes to the schools in the area. If you would like to have him come speak into any of the schools in the areas or have any kind of seminars, I'm telling you it's powerful uh, because we've been there. And I want Denny just to share a little bit about, um, he calls it the war on drugs. And when you go through something as powerful as we have and people that have went through this that have lost children because of prescription drugs, um, it'll make you want to fight. It'll make you want to do something. It'll make you want to um, make a difference in somebody else's life. So tell them about going to the schools. We've got about seven more minutes. Um, tell them the war on drugs, what we're doing on that when you go out and just share a little bit about what we went through on that. And well, I, I go and basically I give my testimony, uh, which I've not got, went into a lot of the things that, that I've done. And, and uh, you know, God, like I said, has done a great work in me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when I hated everybody, honestly. Uh, yes. And, and God has, has really changed my life. But when I go in and I talk to these kids, it's real. The, the drug addiction is real. Yes. Uh, prescription drug addiction is real and that's what my son died of. Mm -hmm. uh, they're easy attainable mm -hmm. and people, they, it's the easiest drug that there ever was to get and for five dollars you can get enough drugs to OD on. Mm -hmm. And I tell, tell these kids... Tell them why it's five dollars. Why do you think that? Well, it's, I, I, it's the fact that people can get on uh, government subsidies and for five dollars, they can go and get their uh, prescriptions. Yes. And uh, my son used to tell me how they would sell and mm -hmm. trade and Didn't all sell. that. And and if you're out there and you're into this, yes. I'm telling you that death is what is is the thing that's going to come to you yes. if you don't change your life. Because I've seen it. I've mm -hmm. seen people. And sometimes you wonder if maybe death is not the easiest way out. If you've ever seen you don't that you most drug addicts that have lived to be very long you can see it on their face and you can mm. see the way that they look and the way they live. It destroys, it mm -hmm. completely destroys. But you know, when my son, when he passed away, he was cremated and when the, the box that, mm -hmm. that he came back in, when uh, after we did what we did with the ashes, I wanted to throw that away. I never wanted to see it again. And God told me, don't throw that away, you will need it. And I've ta I take this box to these schools and I tell them what a, a, a good looking 245 pound six foot three young man is uh, reduced to ashes.